Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yes! Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire, and I am super excited to be scrutinizing this video today. This time we are looking at an all-star jazz and Charleston competition. It's going to be good. Better be good. Hope it's good. It better be good. These dancers I know are high level and love swing dancing. So without further ado, stick around because you're going to hear me tell you my unbiased conjecture at the very end of this video. I look forward to seeing it. Let's go. Here we go. Gustav. He's such a tall dancer. It doesn't even look like it when he's dancing like this. Such great control. Tatiana, she, she's a monster, solo gel, let's see what's going down. I like the, the creative slides that she's putting in there. That's unusual. I think, I don't know if it's the timing, but some of, it seems like some of the timing might be off on some of her movements. It could be my computer. Oh, that was good. Something about his pants makes it look like he's almost doing some illusion tricks that I used to do in like hip hop slides and things. I, I love the illusion. I think it's the background too that helps. Thank you. 
Yes. When dancers put in tap movements, that, that absolutely adds more to it for me. Yes. Christmas. This is my winner right now. Too, too much polish. He's, he's swinging those swing movements. They don't look too Broadway, but he's definitely showing that he's got a bit more control than everybody else. That was, that was really cool. I like that one. Tiger. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. It's a little loose on the, the control part. That kind of takes me out of it when they got good ideas and then it's just not it's not vintage enough. Something I, something just goes wrong with me. Purettes.
Praga, Italia. That foot plant. <laughs> it's almost like she's doing the dishes. Like, man, I'm never that happy doing the dishes. <laughs> Ever. Yes. We got Jerry Foot. Let's see what's up. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Can't go wrong with that move. Yeah, good slides. Put that hammer time in there. I saw that hammer time. This is really syncopated. I like it. I think that's it. Let's talk about it. All right, guys, I had fun with that. I, can, I gotta be honest with you, you know me, I like to keep it real and just tell you exactly what I feel after watching something. I wasn't 100% entertained, but I was still slightly impressed. <laughs> Let me explain what I mean. There were a few people that really had some tight sets and I think that won me over a little bit. I, I will tell you that it's very difficult to judge solo jazz competitions and for a myriad of reasons. I think one of those is that we're in the future. We're dancers that are looking on the past, trying to replicate moves that have existed a long time and yet try to find moments within that to have a unique individual voice. And that's really hard to do. I mean, my philosophy is, is you can't have 50, 60, 70, 80% all artistry in the future because you end up losing the past. But the dancers in the past, that's all they had. They were just kind of making up the jazz moves that we're doing as craftsmanship off the cuff. That was just what they did. If It might be different. If we were in the past, it could be different. But right now, there has to be that balance. And as a judge, I typically look to see if most of the dancers can do at minimum 40 to 50% recognizable solo jazz moves that have been created by other people. That's just respect, you know, for me. Now, if everybody does that, then I'm looking for those nuances that say distinction. How can I look at this person in a silhouette and find myself going, that's unique. And I gotta tell you guys, I wasn't that impressed. I, I just think everybody tends to think, okay, fast song means go right into the Charleston. Like, quick, <laughs> that's it. And, and I feel like a lot of the dancers just are on automatic pilot and it's hard. I, I'm being critical because it's hard. I even find it hard in my own dancing to take measured, calculated risk that are still respectable to the genre because you don't want to be too far in the art part without taking along all of the things that are recognizable. So with that said, I had three people that stood out. 
three people that stood out to me. And it was for different reasons though, different reasons. So my, my third place I'd have to say was most likely Jerry. Jerry Foote, he's, he, for me, he's a really awesome dancer. He kind of had the same journey I had. I was a dancer before getting into swing dancing and Jerry was kind of like that too. You know, we had different dance backgrounds. I, I did a lot of hip hop too, like him. And so it was really difficult for dancers like us to be able to um, switch genres without leaving a vestige of our previous genre onto the new one. And so when I look at Jerry, there's a piece of me that's like, man, he's come a long way. I'm looking at just what he's doing in this one. I'm like, that's a, that's a vintage solo jazz dancer. And so I like a lot of his energy. I think he's balanced the, the amount of energy you're supposed to have in the vintage times um, with modern times. And, and I think that's the hardest part for dancers that have, you know, come from other genres. It's really hard to figure out like what's too much, you know, particularly for the hip hop dancers. But at the same time, this is the reason why he was third place for me. Like, look at me giving a compliment sandwich. I have to do it because whenever I see too many movements that don't look like the genre, it takes me out of it. I, t I no longer respect it. I look at it and I go, well, it's great if those were his original moves, but I know all of those hip hop moves. I know those campy hip hop moves that we all can relate to. And yes, rhythmically, they can all fit together but there's something that's hollow about that. And there's something kind of like disengaging whenever I see someone immediately go to a different genre and add it in. It's almost like saying, look at me, y'all don't know this, you know? And so anyway, that's how I feel about it. But what I do like is the fact that he had the joy part that I feel a lot of the other dancers were missing. He had the ability to at least do the movements in a respectable way. I will say it was probably like, you know, 35, to like 85%, you know, 35, maybe like not that much. I would say it was maybe 60, 40, 60, 40, where he was adding a lot of stuff that was personality. And then the other 40%, I could recognize it, but he, he added more personality than uh, many of the other dancers, but not as much as my second place person. So my second place person was, uh, I believe it was Audrey Daswak. Yes. Now I got to tell you guys, like I liked, what I liked about her movement is that there was amazing personality. I gotta tell you, the personality for me was a bit much. It's a, it's a little bit more seductive than what I wanna see, but I gotta respect that I feel when I watch her, that's who she is. She's totally congruent with her dancing. I don't feel like she's showing me vintage solo jazz. I feel like she's dancing and she happens to be doing jazz moves and I still see her personality. So she was able to capture what I felt Jerry had with the joy part, but also I felt that she had a better way of showing me the technique in a way that blended personality with the technique. And that was good. So for me, I felt she was like maybe 50-50, 50% craftsmanship, 50% like personality, she had a lot of hip movements and things like that. And I think that's, if that's what you wanna do, I can't critique that too much because it's still within the context of swing dancing. Of course you had people that were suggestive in their dancing back then, but it wasn't like people twerking. It's not the same, you know what I mean? So if she would have broke down and started doing that, then I, she would have lost me, you know what I mean? But so I respect that. She's second place for me uh, just because, you know, she balanced it better than I thought Jerry did. Now, my first place, I feel, uh, did not have what the second place and third place had. I, I felt the joy part, the ability to kind of feel who they are was missing. But I will tell you this, the fact that he had so much more control and timing in his movement, see, I'm getting excited, that that overshadowed their, ab their ability to be original and to blend craftsmanship with artistry. His control itself put him over the top. And that is Rasmus for me. This guy, I gotta tell you right now, I liked everything about his dancing, almost everything, I'll take that back. All of his sets were super tight. There wasn't a lot of movements that repeated. I got to see him doing multiple jazz steps, but organized in a more syncopated and refined way. Usually I can tell when dancers struggle with solo jazz because they don't know what to do with their arms or they either overuse their arms in a way that make them look as if they just 
They're a professional dancer who learned swing dancing. And so I think he struck the perfect balance for me of using his arms, setting out the choreography in a way where I was aware of what the movements are, where they come from, but I wasn't familiar with how he was placing them. That was his part. And so I give him credit for the choreography part of it. I, I do feel like it was a bit soulless. Like I, I don't know who he is when I'm watching it. I couldn't feel anything, but I'm gonna tell you, I felt like I was watching a perfect representation of a Hollywood uh, performance, MGM, golden era dancer, learning vintage solo jazz and doing it right. Because sometimes they used to do it and just kind of looked blocky and cheesy and a little bit over, you know, overproduced. But he doesn't do that. He doesn't fall suspect to that. And that's what I like about it. So he's my winner for me, guys. I liked everything that he was doing. He just needed to add a little bit more feeling for me. I don't know if it was maybe taking a little bit more risk in his personality and ingenuity. I don't know. Sometimes it, it might be that. Sometimes it could be other things. But for me, this is kind of rare to have someone have the technique part high enough and the choreography part high enough that it trumps the style. Because I'm usually about the style part. So with solo jazz, it's a bit different. You can't just have it all style. Of course, like I said, you got to balance that with craftsmanship. And he nailed it. So what do you guys think? You think... Uh, who did you think was the winner? Who was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. If you guys aren't doing solo jazz yet, you should. You should do it. It's fun. You don't need a partner. You can do it at your home. You should check out some of my lessons. I basically show you why the moves look solo jazz and how you can be able to improvise and, and find your unique voice learning all these old moves. So if you want to learn something like that, take, check it out. I got a lot of free courses, about 25 to 30 of them. You might enjoy it. So with that said, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments section who you like the most. And if I don't see your comments below, hopefully I get a chance to see some of you in my class online. Take care.